We all know the basics of a steam engine. The fire burns the coal, which releases hot gases, which in turn heats the water into pressurised steam, which is then used to power the motion. It's a simple principle, but in the heart of Shilston at Locomotion, there's an engine that's very different from the others. Its name is Imperial, and it's one of the rare examples of a fireless engine. Fireless engines, by looks, do seem very similar to a conventional steam engine, but lack many key features. As the name suggests, fireless engines doesn't have a firebox and has no need for a bunker for coal or a tender. It also lacks a smoke box. Instead, where you would expect to find boiler tubes, the engine carried a reservoir designed to take pressurised superheated water from an external source. The steam from the water would be used like any other steam engine, powering the driving wheels, causing the engine to move. The earliest form of fireless traction was on the tramways in the United States. The trams were not very practical due to the large interior tank, which either held stored steam or ammonia. Ammonia, even though it is poisonous, works really well in engines and has a very low to virtually non-existent carbon footprint, depending on how it was made. Fireless engines did not do too well for passenger services. They were very limited in both their capacity and their speed. Even though the new engines were not welcomed for passengers, the industrial sector welcomed the fireless engines with open arms. Industries on all shapes and sizes rely on steam. Stationary boilers within the factories would power all sorts of machinery from hammers to belts. And because the easiest way to move heavy loads was by steam engines, shunters were an indispensable tool. But steam engines, especially those working inside, would often contaminate the products and the machinery with ash and smoke and, sp and posed a very real fire risk with their hot ashes. Diesels would be even worse. They obviously didn't have a fire, but they would fill the area with carbon monoxide and other dangerous exhaust fumes and their noise would be deafening. The fireless engines had a distinct advantage. Because there was no firebox, the engines could work without the fear of setting the products on fire. They had no soot or ash to contend with and were on the whole cleaner as all they expelled was pure steam. They required lower maintenance, no raking out of the ash and more importantly, no additional coal or additional fuel. They simply fed off the steam of the static boiler and were ready to go again. So how does a fireless engine work? Put it simply, exactly the same as a standard steam locomotive. The firebox, the smoke box and the boiler are removed and instead of the boiler is replaced with an accumulator. The engine takes on superheated water under extreme pressure from the front and the steam from the water drives the driving wheels. As the steam is used, the pressure drops, causing the superheated water to turn from water into steam, replacing the steam that was used. The engine can continue running quite happily until it either runs out of water or if the pressure drops below a useful level. Being fireless though is not without its disadvantages. The fireless engines were not designed to travel for any distance or speed. It's not like they couldn't do the work in theory, but because they didn't have the luxury of carrying fuel in external tanks or have a fireman to help maintain good levels of steam continuously, it couldn't risk getting up to any reasonable speed or travel far lest it be stranded on the line. While many were smaller engines, it wasn't the case for some. Some fireless engines were classed as decapods, 10 driving wheels in a 0-10-0 arrangement. The tier 0 10 0 decapods were used in the construction of the Baghdad Railway in an attempt to reduce the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning from the standard locomotive smoke while boring tunnels underground. Even though steam locomotives are rarely used in industry, some fireless engines are still running today. Because there's less to look over, fireless engines are easier to operate than steam or even diesel 
and have found homes in thermal nuclear power stations and incineration plants. They are cheap to run and can easily be run inside factories as all they emit is steam. They can keep their steam pressure for hours, which is perfect for when most of the time they remain idle, waiting for work. Steam and diesels need constant care to maintain pressure, and leaving a diesel idle just wastes fuel in exchange for noxious fumes. Fireless engines have the added advantage of being safer than steam. Steam boilers have a nasty habit of exploding if the top sheet is not under the waterline. Fireless engines though, they simply stop working. So let's have a closer look at Imperial. It's a youngster as steam engines go, and was built in 1956 by Andrew Barclay and Sons in Kilmarnock, and even though it was able to be number one, it was in fact the last engine of their production line. It went on to join her sisters 3 and 2 at the Imperial Paper Mills in Kent. The mills made newspapers, and the shunters, which were also joined by two other fireless locomotives, were perfect for the paper mill. They could haul heavy loads when needed, could feed off any available boiler, and they posed no fire risk to the delicate and flammable pulp that they were hauling. Imperial No. 1 enjoyed many years without incident at the mill, until the closure of the internal railway network in 1978. As her work was done, the Imperial was graciously donated to the National Railway Museum to enjoy her retirement. Sadly, there is nothing left of the old factory where she worked, as the mill closed its doors for good in 1981. It's amazing that some form of steam traction is still in use today in the industrial sector, and we have to thank the fireless engines for this. They are fantastic machines, and I would definitely recommend going to the locomotion to go and see Imperial. She is a one of a kind in the collection, and we are very lucky to have her preserved for the nation.